waking up this morning, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. We had plenty, plenty of stars above us last night. It was fantastic. I haven't seen that in months. Today we've got a long day ahead of us. Um, we've got a lot of beautiful passes to go through. We are attempting something <coughs> known as the Ben 10 Eco Challenge. Um, we're not doing it officially or anything like that. We're just, you know, kind of going along with the route. Um, going to try to do as many of the passes as we can. There's 10 mountain passes in the Eastern Cape Highlands. And um, yeah, we're just going to kind of go for it. <laughs> Uh, we don't have too much plan in terms of campsites and things like that. We'll try and wild camp where we can. We'll book in at campsites where we need to, things like that. Um, the main thing is just to take it easy and experience this beautiful place. Welcome to the Eastern Cape Highlands. My name is Adrian Abrahams and this week we officially kick off the first Rome 2.0 travel series. Our adventure will take us across the Eastern Cape Highlands in our attempt to complete the Ben 10 Eco Challenge. Because we're going to be spending most of the day off-road today, we're going to drop the tire pressures, get them to a bit more of a comfortable pressure, just so we're not rattling our teeth about on the trail. A new piece of kit I've gotten recently is the Indeflate. Uh, now this is a tire inflator, deflator, but what's nice with this is you can link up your two rear tires, for example, at the same time. You deflate them at the same time, you inflate them at the same time, so they're both equal pressures, which is really, really nice. And it also, it's an amazing little quick connect, so you're not sitting there screwing stuff, you're not sitting on your haunches for, you know, 15 minutes. It, it just, it turns the experience into a much easier one. So I was sitting at about two and a half bar, but I'm gonna bring the tires down to around 1.8 at the back and then about 1.6 at the front would be quite a heavy load. Uh, normally I'd do 1.6, you know, front and back if you weren't on such a loaded vehicle. Just gonna make the ride a little bit more supple off-road. After nine months of no travel, this trip was about feeling free again. If that meant wild camping, staying in a backpackers or campsites, we would go where the wind would take us. And sometimes, quite literally, so needless to say, Marcus and I were ready for a real adventure and the Ben 10 Eco Challenge would be a great stepping stone on this 20 day trip. So what is the Ben 10 Eco Challenge? As far as I understand, it is a challenge made popular by Mountain Passes South Africa. The goal is to travel through the Eastern Cape Highlands 10 highest mountain passes, supporting local tourism along the way. I'll link below to their website so you can read all about it but I just wanted to use the format for inspiration. But due to COVID-19 lockdowns, not all of the passes were accessible. So we would be doing what we could and where we could as we felt. We out here at Jubez Pass and it is absolutely phenomenal. It's beautiful scenery. Um, it's just rolling hills and we're surrounded by the Maluti Mountains. It's like paradise farmland. I can't wait to keep kind of exploring this and seeing this and if this is what we've got planned for the next three days, I think this is going to be quite an epic trip. It's not hard 4 by 4 or anything like that, we're in just 4 high and we're just cruising. But it's just something to really soak in and, and absorb. It's, it's stunning. What an awesome little spot to pull over and have a little sandwich. This is one of my favorite things about overlanding is having all of your stuff with you. You just pick where you want to stop. You don't have to wait to get to a restaurant or anything like that. We wanted to pull out the Weber and have a little braai here. We could. It's a little bit windy. But a quick sandwich. Hit the road again. Keep enjoying this beautiful scenery. What a pleasure.
After building this incredible vehicle over the past couple months, I finally got to really test it out on and off-road. And seeing just how well the Fox suspension just eats up the gravel roads and how the power brakes safely handle this fully loaded Tourer down even the steepest mountain passes. I was beaming the whole time and I really am loving this vehicle. I was confident that no matter what challenges we would face on this trip, we would make it through. And with our first pass down, we got to really sit back and enjoy the beautiful scenery. But there was one thing niggling us the whole time. No matter where we stopped, the wind. Dude, the wind is crazy. At the time, we didn't think much of it, but I think we would become more closely acquainted as we made our way through the Eastern Cape Highlands. We've been driving now, trying to find a little spot for lunch. Under a tree, by a stream, something pretty. And uh, it's constantly evading us. But I'm hoping that somewhere soon we're gonna find the spot. So just as I was crying about not having a spot for lunch, we stumbled upon a beautiful spot with water, in the shade, and out of the wind. This is gonna be a nice little win winner of a spot. But we're just having a quick spot of lunch and uh, have a little bit of a chill and get out of here. That's pretty damn sweet. So we off the dirt roads now, we're back on the tar. We've just come through the Barkley Pass, which is another one of the Ben 10 passes. And we're heading over now to the Buster Footpath Pass. Um, there is a sneaky little spot on there where I do want to set up camp for the night, enjoy a sunset and a beautiful sunrise in the morning. It should be quite isolated from the wind and things like that. And it's going to give us a really nice starting point to tackle the rest of the Buster Footpath Pass tomorrow morning. Then we can head through to the town of Ugi, or however you say it, um, in the morning, fuel up, resupply, and get ready to kind of finish our Ben 10 Eco Challenge Trail. But it's been a long, beautiful day today. The scenery out here is incredible. If you ever get the chance to get out here, just do it. It's really stunning. Now this was a familiar trail to me. I'd done this three years ago in my Amarok and wild camped on the peak. It is still one of my most memorable overlanding adventures and I was really hoping to replicate it for my birthday. It's a deceptive trail though and felt much longer than I remembered and much more rocky. But we just took it slow and enjoyed the golden late afternoon light. Now this part of the mountain is certainly picturesque and reminds me immensely of Scotland. But what awaits us at the pinnacle is just something truly spectacular. And yes, it is just as impressive as the first time. And you really do feel like you're on top of the world. Holy cow, it is so damn windy. Just here, we're actually out of the wind and it's really windy. Just up on the hill, it is absolutely insane. But it is so damn beautiful. It would be a shame not to spend the night here. But if it's going to be like this the whole night long, we might not be able to cook those nice delicious rumps for my birthday and things like that. So I think we're going to have to have a little, a little ceremonial birthday ice cream up here. And then we'll take a little bit of time and weigh up whether we're going to stay here for the night or not. Um, 
it seems like the outcropping where the vehicle is at the moment just isn't protecting us from the wind enough. Oh, it is too depressingly windy right now outside and the ice creams are just not going to happen out there. I'm scared the wind is going to blow my birthday ice cream off the mountain. And I'm not letting that happen. We have trekked these ice creams too far and for too long. But it looks like we're going to have to change our plans a bit. We're going to make our way down the mountain and um, yeah, see if we can find another campsite. We might arrive there in the dark, but... Um, Whatever, that's the game we play, right? Epic rewards, but you gotta be prepared for the situation to change at any moment. But for now, time to enjoy this delicious ice cream and uh, try and see if we can find something on iOverlander on the Garmin. Maybe we can find another wild campsite. Otherwise, um, yeah, let's see how it goes. <laughs> it's open-ended. I love fringes. Disappointed? Sure. But what is an adventure without adversity? We just didn't know how adverse it was about to become for us, as we were just about to begin a 12 hour battle against the wind. One that we would definitely lose. But the promise of a sunrise over the mountains in the morning was all we could cling to to keep us sane. It's lovely. So the past 12 hours has been really interesting it's been incredibly beautiful but it has been grueling and the only way i can describe the wind last night is a relentless assault it was just so violent we set up camp three times in three different places where we thought this spot is going to be quiet we get out we walk around we test it out, the wind isn't too bad, we pop up, the, literally undo the clips on the tent and the gusts come. And the, these gusts were 60 to, to 100 k's an hour. It was seriously intense. The blade, my rooftop tent, handled it so, so well. But it was shaking the car around so much so that it was just it was just unbearable we tried to sleep i mean we ma managed to spend about two hours at this campsite um, before we actually decided let's close the tent let's get in the front seats and let's just get some sleep um, because it was just not happening it was just we just in our minds you have this fear that this wind it's almost like it's pushing you off the bloody cliff it was just so intense so look we've got a long day ahead of us today we needed to get some rest but i think we've also decided that we're going to take it easy today and go and find ourselves a nice campsite just to chill out at shower rest do all of those little basic necessities two nights of wild camping has been very fun but very interesting so we don't have too much fuel now, so we gotta just slowly make our way down the Buster Footpath Pass and get to a campsite, get to a town, and get to a little bit of normality. It's lovely living like wild men out in the mountains, but <laughs> it'll be just as nice to have a hot shower and a comfortable, safe place to set up for the day. Well, let's get cracking. And there we were, making our way down the Buster Footpath Pass with our tails between our legs, in search of some respite to make some breakfast, and then to refuel in the nearby town of Ugi. This pass, for me, 
was one of the more challenging and treacherous passes out of the Ben 10 challenge. But it is so immensely rewarding. The scenery from the get-go until you hit the tar again is just incredible. And something I want to emphasize when attempting to wild camp like we did, we follow a leave no trace policy. Not a bottle cap or a cigarette butt. Only your footprints and tire tracks. We might feel wild and free, but we still respect the land. Or even better, there are some awesome campsites and BNBs in the area where you can book in and support the local tourism industry. Our route had led us now to another epic peak known as Nordir's Neck, where you get to really see what the wind has been like in the highlands for us. Although, this was particularly wild. I don't know, the winds must be blowing 100 k's an hour. <laughs> it is ridiculous. If I had to open the door right now, it would snap it off. You have to literally all of my strength to hold the door and I'm holding the glasses on my face it is quite insane uh, but we are now going to be making our way down and we are almost at our campsite for the night we're going to be playing staying at a place called steep falls or steep side campsite or something like that but apparently it's quite amazing so yep let's get going this part we would have to savor because it is actually where we would be cutting this part of the journey short. And with still a good few of the most epic passes left, they were unfortunately closed due to COVID-19. Well, that's just an excuse for us to come back to this incredible part of the country again and complete the Ben 10 challenge. It's amazing. The environment has changed so many times on this trip. And you'd think the Eastern Cape Highlands would just be green, rolling hills, everything like that. But we've seen everything. Yeah, we're surrounded by all this beautiful Feinbos. We've been through rocks. We've been through the green pastures. It's, it's actually a stunning, stunning location. Definitely recommend coming out here, yeah? having a little explore, booking in at some of the B&Bs and campsites and things like that. It's a fantastic place. To tour now with you know all the various different lockdowns and things like that and that is exactly what we were going to do i searched for a campsite on the garmin overlander and a little place called steep side showed up we had a read up about it and we decided to give it a go and wow i didn't expect such a magical little campsite i couldn't wait to set up camp out of the wind, make a fire, and have an amazing night's sleep. Now this is a beautiful campsite. Look, not like uh, sleeping on the side of mountains isn't beautiful, but that comes with certain challenges. We're here, we've got hot water showers, we've got flushing toilets, <laughs> we're being treated here. And uh, I must say, it is, I'm very grateful. It's gonna be well appreciated. We haven't had a proper shower in two, three days, so, you know, to get in there, have a good shower is going to be amazing. Um, we've got a little fireplace. We're going to make a fire tonight, get a good meal going, and just be able to really just relax a little bit. I was starting to get familiar with my setup by now, and getting the tent up was a breeze on its own anyways. But I was really excited to get the proper camp set up out for tonight. And with the tent up and ready for me to just hop in when the time is right, I wanted to make a little fire for us to roast some marshmallows and I brought the bon brai with us for this very occasion. 
What I love about it is that it will leave the beautiful green grass undamaged underneath it. And that leave no trace, guilt-free mentality makes me so happy. Now, I've really been loving how versatile and easy everything is to access on my bush tech canopy. It's always important to have good access to your tables and chairs, and this really hits the nail on the head. Grab me now. By now, both Marcus and I were set up, showered, and ready to chill out around the fire and make some delicious food. What an awesome way to wrap up our Eastern Cape Highlands adventure. Thank you so much for tuning in and make sure to subscribe and stay tuned to see what's coming up next week as we take on the wild coast of South Africa. I just want to give a massive shout out to my incredible patrons for supporting me over these really difficult times. Without their support, these shows would not be possible. On the next episode of Roam Over Landing, we take on the wild coast. With campsites rivaled by few and packed full of adventure, this is one you do not want to miss. My vehicle setup is a collaboration between all of my product partners. To find out more about the equipment in this video, head to the links in the description below. Cheers! Solar showers. 150 times better than the solar showers.